I've got the TYT MD380 here, which is a new budget DMR radio from China. It currently costs around $160, and for that price you'll get a single band radio, which is UHF or VHF, that works on analog FM and DMR modes. So let's start off by looking at what you get in the box. Obviously you get the radio body, it also comes with the battery, separate, and the belt clip which you have to screw on yourself. There are also two antennas, a shorter one which is for convenience and a longer one which is for better performance. I personally just leave the longer one on all the time. You'll also get a charger which should come with the correct plug for your region and also the user's manual. Depending on your radio seller you might get a cheap headset, these things only cost around $2 anyway, and also you might get a CD with the software on. Uh, if you don't get this CD, the software is freely available online anyway. One thing that doesn't come by default in the box is the programming cable, which you can buy separately for around $10. The radio uses a standard Kenwood 2-pin connector, but you have to use the TYT programming cable because others won't work. However, accessories are compatible from other manufacturers. So let's have a look at the body of the radio and see what you get with this. You get a standard full keypad, which also works as DTMF if you press down the keys while you're holding the push to talk button. You've got a nice colour screen, which you'll see plenty more of later in this video. The speaker, which actually I really like the speaker on this radio, it sounds really nice and gives a good response to higher and lower frequencies. On the top you've got the LED indicator, which shows when you're transmitting, receiving and scanning. Here is the power and volume switch, so you just turn the volume up to turn it on and turn it all the way down to turn it off. The channel selector, which goes 1 to 16, and the antenna connector. The bit from the radio sticks out and the pin is in the antenna which means that this antenna is SMA male. So if you want to buy any replacement or aftermarket antennas for this radio you need to buy an SMA male antenna. On the left hand side of the radio you've got side key 1 which is this one at the top here, side key 2 and the push to talk button. Both of these side keys are programmable on the computer software. On the back you've got the belt clip which you have to screw on yourself when you get the radio and also the battery of course uh, with the battery release up here. It's very easy to remove this battery all you have to do is push that in and it pops out just like that. Replacement batteries for this radio aren't too expensive so you can easily get a replacement battery but this one seems to last pretty well anyway. On the right hand side of the radio is the speaker mic connector which is also used for programming the radio. It uses the standard Kenwood style connector so there are plenty of cheap accessories available for this radio. So now let's turn on the radio and have a look at what we get. It welcomes you when you turn it on and then you get this screen which shows your channel name, the zone that it's in and the channel number within that zone. Below that it also shows the date and time. Along the top you have a load of icons to show you different things. Now that one's obviously the signal meter. I don't think the signal meter is too accurate on this radio though because it often shows a signal even when there isn't one around and it doesn't really always show the strongest signal even when I do have a strong signal according to other radios. This one here shows you that it's on low power and that one there is because I've got all the alert tones turned off. This radio has a problem where the alert tones are all really loud no matter what you set the radio's volume to with this. So um, I've turned off all the alert tones because otherwise they're usually much louder than the audio. This little icon here shows you that you're on a digital channel and the one next to it shows the battery level. Now down here is the utilities where it's slightly more interesting because we've got this program radio option which is actually for front panel programming. If you go into that it will ask you for a password 
Now I've just set the password to this because I don't really need a password on it anyway. And you can edit the receive and transmit frequency as well as the channel name, the timeout timer, which stops you from talking for too long. Uh, the CTCSS and DCS if you're on an analog channel. The color code for digital channels and the repeater slot for digital channels. It does miss out one thing for digital channels, which is the contact that you're going to transmit to. So if you want to program in, for example, a new repeater that uses a different talk group to normal, then you wouldn't be able to do that entirely on the radio. You would actually have to go into the programming software to select the transmit contact and also to assign a group list to it. But apart from that, the FPP is pretty good. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this radio. The pros are that it's cheap and it works on both DMR and FM modes. And it's also a lot cheaper to run than other radios. For example, the programming cable only costs $10 and the software is free. Compared to, say, the Motorola radios where the software costs an awful lot and the programming cable is also very expensive. The other good thing about this radio is the accessory connector, which is the Kenwood 2-pin style, which means that you can really easily find super cheap accessories online for this radio. There are plenty of speaker mics and earpieces and things like that that you can buy on websites like eBay or Amazon for really bargain prices. Another good point about this radio is the size. It's actually a really nice size. You can see it fits really nicely in my hand. It's not too big and it's pretty light as well. Comparing this radio to another radio, for example this DP3600, you can see that the TYT is quite a lot shorter, which makes it a lot nicer to wear on your belt and to handle, because it's just that much smaller and it just gets in the way that much less. So I've talked about the good points of this radio, but there are a few negatives as well. The performance of the radio is not quite as good as other radios, for example this Motorola DP4800 or this DP3600. And the radio isn't quite as rugged either. It's not waterproof and I don't think it would stand up to drops as well as those radios would. But I haven't actually mentioned the worst negative point about this radio yet, which is all the bugs in it. It didn't seem like they've spent much time testing this radio because I found a load of bugs in this radio in the first few hours after I received it and started using it. I have got a list of the bugs I've discovered so far on my blog so I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested. An example of one of the bugs that is definitely not good is that if you set the radio to RX only which is receive only on a certain channel and then you go into the supplementary features and try to use them, then it will still transmit anyway, regardless of whether you've set it to receive only or not. This could mean that if you set the radio up on a business frequency just to listen in, then you would actually end up illegally transmitting on that channel because the radio has this bug. With this TYT MD380, you do get what you pay for and you can expect to find quite a few bugs and slightly reduced performance compared to the other radios. But if you just want to try out DMR at a good price, then this is the radio for you. If you're not already watching this video in the series playlist, then I'll put a link for you in the description so you can go and watch the whole series of videos on this radio. I'll also put up a comparison between this radio and the Motorola radios so you can see the difference in performance and audio quality. If you enjoyed this review or found it useful, please don't forget to click the like button and possibly share it with anyone else who you think might find it useful.